Welcome back. So today is day three on the replacement of uh, this driver side heater channel on Kurt's Bug. On the last episode, you saw us go ahead and get all the uh, rotten areas uh, patched up and repaired. We got the channel to fit correctly. We modified the channel so it would actually fit the chassis right. We still have to get this inner fender well patched up. Um, so we've got to cut our patch, get it shaped correctly, uh, get that welded in. Once we've got that done, then we're really uh, ready to go ahead and get welding on the heater channel. So we're going to get this uh, inner fender well taken care of, and then I'm going to get the door hung again and get this support bar cut out. Then we'll get the door adjusted where we want it, which is going to place this A-pillar where we want it. Then we can go ahead and get the, uh, get the heater channel welded in. And... Uh, call it a day. So let's get to it. All right, so first things first, uh, this patch piece is much, much bigger than we actually need. So we're going to go ahead and trim away all the excess here. We'll leave it a little big so we can fine tune, but it'll be much easier to get this uh, shaped correctly if we just have the bulk of this gone. So there's a, a rough line, and I'm going to cut well above this. I'll probably cut you know, an inch or so above this, just to give me some, some space. So I'm gonna get that clipped off, and the flange in the bottom of this panel is not required for what we're doing. We wanna match the original, and it did not have this ugly flange, so we'll, I'm gonna clip that off as well, and then, uh, then we can start fine tuning. So let me get to some cutting here. All right, so there we have it. We've got this trimmed down a little bit, so it'll be a little easier to work with as we're doing our fitting. And I went ahead and sanded the edges just to get rid of any burrs so I'm not cutting myself. But now you can see how this will actually flex around pretty easily and kind of gives us a, a rough idea of what's going on. What we need to do at this point, though, is get the fender and get that hung on here just temporarily because this is our, our lower fender bolt, and we want to make sure that we've got this thing spaced up and down correctly so things will line up. There's a lot of adjustment ability in the fender, but we still want to get this as close to the center position as we can. So with the fender mounted in place now, we can kind of see what's going on, and I've got it aligned as, uh, as close as I can get it for the time being, and if I pull this back just a little bit, you can see where the hole for the bolt is uh, in this inner fender well. And then right back here, you can see the, the actual fender bolt hole. And you can see just how, how high this is in relation to that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have to trim a little bit more off of the bottom of this, which I kind of figured was going to have to happen. Uh, so I'm going to take you know, probably another half of an inch off the bottom that'll let this drop down, get this hole lined up correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this bottom trimmed up, make that look nice, uh, clean up this top edge just a little bit, and then uh, we should be able to move on. All right, so with this guy all trimmed up here, let's just slide this back in place. All right, so taking a look here now, my bolt hole lines up exactly. If I tug the fender in a little bit. Um, now this is too far this way because of the way it wraps around here, so we still have to get this all trimmed to go. But now we can see that once I got this held up here, we've got plenty of clearance down here in the bottom, and really it's just a matter of getting this all, all trimmed up here. So I'm pretty, pretty satisfied with how this is sitting right now. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just kind of mark this where it sits right now. That way we can get the fender out and then get this kind of held up in the place without this in our way and do our final markings here. All right, so now I can kind of hold this guy up in the place here, get it lined up with my markings I made before, 
And now I know that my height is going to be correct. Uh, I'd like to move this over a little bit, so I'm going to mark. I'm going to trim this guy off right here, get rid of the bottom of this flange, and then we'll make the rest of our markings here. All right, I think that's, uh, that's looking pretty good here. What we'll do now is we'll just scribe a line in the, on the car here, and then uh, we'll trim right, right along that line there, and then that should be about all we need to do here. I wanna make sure that the line on, on our fender here matches, so. All in all, I think that looks I think that looks pretty good right there. So now So there we are. There's our our trim line there. Uh, by getting rid of all of this, we know we're going to have the exact shape. So let's uh let's grab our cutoff disc here and finish this guy off. Well here we are. So we've got everything trimmed now and things are pretty close to fitting height wise. So that seam lines up pretty pretty decently. Now we just need to get the shape of this thing to match the contours on the car here. Really we're just going to spend a, a couple minutes here. I'll get this all bent around so all this lines up exactly the way it's supposed to. That way we've got our nice fender bead line here. It's just a little bit of a uh, little bit of this and a little bit of that to get things lined up where we need to. So let me let me take care of that and I'll bring you back in just a minute. Here we have it. Uh, I just spent the better part of the last half hour uh, getting this all manipulated to make sure everything fits right. And we've got it set now. If I can wiggle this into place. So all of our contours here are matching. So things are lining up pretty good. Uh, it is basically ready to weld in. The last thing we need to do is to uh, place a series of holes along the bottom here for all of our spot welds. So what we'll do is I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and clear away the paint uh, on both sides of the patch panel here. I'll clear away the paint on the, on the car so we've got a nice clean surface to weld to. And then uh, we'll just punch a series of holes and clear the paint around the bottom here. I'll slap on some, some of the weld through primer on the back side where it's going to be pinched uh, up against the heater channel and we should be ready to go. All right, well, we're gonna get welding here. And first thing I wanna do is this seam right here in this heater channel uh, is open, and it doesn't look like it was spot welded very well, if at all. And uh, I just wanna go ahead and weld this up, uh, seal it up, and just make sure we don't have any issues. So I'm gonna get that welded, and then we'll grind it flush, and then we'll get our panel fitted up. All right, here we go. It's time to start fitting things in place. Get everything clamped up here. So here's our replacement panel. We've already got the backside coated with some of the weld through primer. And that guy is just going to slip up into place here. 
Now what we're going to do to clamp this down is just use some of these welding clamps here. It's got a little bar that goes across the back. Slide this up and we'll put it right about here I think. Now we can start shimmying things around until we get it lined up. All right, so here we are. We've got the inner quarter all fixed up. Uh, got that welded in. Still have to clean up the seam. I got to grind all the welds off. Uh, I'm going to wait until I've got everything else kind of wrapped up here. I have ground enough uh, to clean up the area where I'm going to be working. This A pillar uh, needs to wrap around. I want to make sure I don't have to work on any of the welds there. So that's all set. Uh, the rest of it we'll just clean up later. I did uh, go ahead and grab the fender and I remounted that and made sure everything lines up good and and really we're all set to go here. So now it's uh, it's really time to go ahead and get uh, get welding on the heater channel itself. I've gone and removed the support bar for the door. So now this is free to kind of be adjusted where we need to. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and throw this pillar on here. I'll grab the door. We'll get that mounted up. And once we got everything tweaked and adjusted where we think it needs to be, I'm going to drive a couple of sheet metal screws in just to kind of pinch everything in place. And then, uh, then we'll start welding. So I'm going to get this door hung and uh, we'll get everything adjusted up and then uh, we'll see where we are. All right, so there we have it. We got the door mounted. I got everything uh, adjusted so everything's flush. I got the A-pillar patch all adjusted so that all lines up. And then you'll see there I got the ratchet strap installed here to actually kind of help pull the body square so things don't move around on us. And I've measured the door gap and it is even top to bottom. And uh, I know the gap doesn't look even right now, uh, but we still have to get the hinges adjusted, but the gap itself is correct. So now it's really time to start welding. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop inside the car from the passenger side and I'm going to go ahead and, and throw some tack welds in and uh, once everything's kind of holding itself together uh, both front and back then we're going to go ahead and pull the door back off so we can do the rest of our finish welding. And uh, we'll probably weld a little bit, put the door on, check, make sure everything is square. 
and then pull the door off, do some more welding. So it'll be a lot of back and forth, but uh, we're really close now. So I'm going to go ahead and jump inside and uh, let's start tacking things together and make sure we're on the right track. All right, so now we've got things tacked in place. I started welding that inner quarter to the heater channel. I've spotted a few in the rear quarter as well as a bunch of stuff on the inside. So really at this point, um, it should kind of hold itself together. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this ratchet strap off now. We'll remeasure the door, make sure that that holds up good. And then uh, we'll operate the door, make sure that that's all you know, functioning for the time being. We still have a lot of weakness in this area, but hopefully things will be kind of, sort of in the settled positions. I didn't see much in the way of movement there. Measure up our door and And it's right on. It's right where I expected it to be. So now when I open this up, you can still see there's a little bit of, little bit of droop there. Uh, again, it's still pretty weak in that area, but it's much better than it was. Let's just see how we did here. Everything in the pillar still lines up just like we want it to. So really we are ready to go ahead and weld this home. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this door back off and uh, continue with the, with the welding up in the front. We'll kind of get that all situated and then, uh, then we'll work our way back. All right, so I've got a majority of it welded up now, uh, all that that was easy to access anyway. And I went ahead and hung the door. I have had it on a couple times here just to make sure. But now that everything is pretty solid, uh, I went ahead and readjusted the latch and made some tweaks to the hinges. And now we've got it closing exactly the way we want it to. But all in all, things are really really coming along pretty good. I'm pretty happy so far. Uh, what we're going to do now, because there's a lot of areas that are just hard to access, because it's pretty solid, I'm going to go ahead and drop the chassis and uh, just get that pushed off to the side. That way I can reach around inside and be able to get at all of the points that I need to weld. And then I've got a few holes I need to patch up in the front where the firewall was damaged. And then there's an area back here uh, that I just can't get to while it's on the chassis. So we'll get the rest of those pieces made up, 
get the rest of it welded and uh, we're just about there. Well, all right, here we are next day. And uh, last night before I got everything cleaned up, I went ahead and took the door off, got that put aside. And then today I went and finished up all my patches here. So here's what we've got. This is the inner fender well area that we, we replaced. And then you can see we still have the remains of the patch panel that still needs to be folded over and welded in place. But down at the bottom here, this is all wide open here. And the original sheet metal, when the car was put together, they stamped everything in such a way that this was all closed off. Uh, but the replacement piece didn't have that. So what I've gone and done here is I've just taken a little, little chunk. I didn't uh, use any kind of cardboard cutout for this. It's such a simple piece. I just bent a 90, laid it up in here, and then scribed it to fit and then cut that, cut that shape out. I did uh, do all this fitting with the door in place because I needed to make sure that this was the same height as the door when the door is mounted. So I, this is the first piece that I made here. So up here in the front, uh, you can see all the sheet metal we cut out here. There's a big chunk missing from right here. And then the bottom of this seal channel is missing. So what we've done, uh, I've trimmed everything up, made sure we've got nice clean metal, and uh, we're going to piece this together in, in uh, three separate pieces here. First thing I'm going to do is insert the bottom of this channel here. And so I've gone and uh, we've bent one up to match the original shape. I did put a, I took my flanger and put a little flange in here so that'll sit up on, on the top of this here but then still be flush on the, on the bottom. Got everything fit in here, so now I'll just slide this up in here. And then the bottom, the bottom of this actually sits flush with the bottom of the heater channel. So now when I rest this on my rubber seal, it's going to be just like it was original. Once that is welded in, then I've got this front section that's just going to slide right up in place, basically like so. And once I've got this other piece welded in, I'm going to mark it, I'm going to uh, punch some holes in here for spot welds and then we'll seam weld it there and I'll punch a couple holes in the side here and we'll spot weld it to the inner quarter panel and that's gonna shore up the whole whole front side of this and then finally uh, the last thing we need to do is fill in this hole here now this is all going to be covered with carpet once the car is put together uh, so you're never going to see this joint so I'm not going to fashion a piece in and, and butt weld it in here. What I've done, what I've decided to do here is I'm just going to lay a, this piece in here like so and we're just going to uh, spot weld this in. That's basically what's going on so now I'm just going to go ahead and uh, and get welded in here. I think that's it. I think we've got everything welded up now. 
I went ahead and uh, double checked everything up front, made sure those patches looked good. Um, went and checked to make sure I didn't have any holes where this little this little filler piece is on the bottom. And then I uh, just went around and kind of double checked everything when I got done just to make sure. After that, really all that's left now is to go ahead and clean up all my welds and uh, knock all this down. So I'll just go ahead and get that done. You don't need to see it. It's just more grinding. All right, there we are. Everything's finished. I went and got everything ground out and cleaned up. Uh, there's still a few spots that need some touch-up work, but we'll take care of that later. But I went ahead and put the chassis back on here and bolted the body down. I remounted the door uh, just to make sure everything was in fact correct. Just to give you a little reminder of where we started, uh, here are the remnants of the old heater channels. So you can see that it was definitely a job that was needed. Uh, here is the whole, the whole front section, and you can see it was just completely, completely rotten. Back here in the in the rear of both channels, uh, you can see just how how rotten things were. You know, there was just no no support left here. So it was definitely a project that was that was needed. So taking a look at what what we did here, if you look here in the back, we've got all these plug welds here have been ground off. Still needs a little bit of cleanup work to make things look really nice, but again, we're just gonna leave it here for the moment. But you can see now, here's the uh, couple patches that we made in the last video. We reinserted this stud here. And so this is all nice and solid now. Up here in the front, you can see this inner, this inner fender patch that we put in. And uh, you know all these spot welds along in here have been mostly ground out. Um, I did end up warping it a little bit right here. I think I got a little overzealous with the welder. Rushed it just a bit much. Fortunately for me, this is just an inner fender and you're not going to see this area. So we'll come back and finish cleaning this up later. And then eventually this is all going to be undercoated. So I'm not, not too concerned with how things look. But we've got our hole plugged down here in the bottom. We've got this fold it over. Uh, needs a little bit of straightening uh, and I still want to come in and throw a couple tack welds on this just to make sure everything's solid but uh, for the moment uh, th things are good to go. Alright looking up here at the front this is our front firewall. This is that patch we put in there you can see that's all been ground smooth and uh, you know all in all that turned out pretty decent. So here's that A pillar that we patched up here. And you can see the, the seam right here has been mostly cleaned up. Uh, again, still need a little bit to do here. Got to get inside the corners. Um, I figured I would just mess with that later. Uh, I did get this well down at the bottom, mostly cleaned up. Still got to come in and do a little bit uh, just to make it look a little nicer and get, get things ready. But, you know, it's nice and solid. The door doesn't wiggle around anymore. So I'm pretty, uh, pretty happy with that. So that's it. Heater channels are done. This was, uh, this was quite a lot of work. You know, I stretched this out over three episodes, but uh, this is a couple of days worth of work for me. Um, I'm pretty happy with how things turned out. All in all, it's good and solid. A uh, few areas still need some cleanup work, but uh, we now have a pretty strong foundation in which to start working on the rest of the vehicle. So that's all we have for today. Uh, make sure you come back for the next video because we're going to get started on the floor pans. Uh, they were finally delivered here so I can go ahead and get these old ones cut out, get the new ones welded in, and again working towards building a real strong foundation. But until then, you just take care and uh, I'll see you around.